Hello everyone, you're watching Life of Ryan. It's almost 7 p.m. and I still haven't started the video, so you're getting a Q&A today. Uh, you can tell behind me there's a lovely vineyard, lovely vineyard, uh, and the weather is beautiful. So, you know, I'm down south, you can probably guess where I am if you're an OG viewer. However, if you don't know where I am yet, don't worry, you'll find out this Sunday on Billy's video. That's right, Billy is doing a video this Sunday. He's not doing daily videos anymore. He's going back to weekly videos and uh, very exciting times. Make sure to check it out. Okay, so let's get this Q&A started with some questions. Haven't even read them yet. So this is uh, impromptu. What's you and or Billy's best finds at an antique shop? Good question. Uh, we found some gold and the antique owner priced it at like two or three euros. Obviously not realizing it was gold and we weren't sure it was gold. Billy wasn't sure. Billy bought it, not me, because I, I had no idea how to spot gold at the time, but Billy thought he saw the hallmark of gold. Once he got it home and tested it, turns out it was gold. And uh, that two or three euro purchase was actually worth 300 or 400 euros at the time. So fantastic buy that was. I'd say that's probably Billy's best buy. As for me, hmm, I've bought a wonderful trunk many years ago and it was at Moinat, the brand from a famous um, female trunk maker back in the day. She was the only female trunk maker back in the day. And the brand is still very prestigious, almost as much as Louis Vuitton. But the condition of the trunk was terrible, wasn't worth much but very nice to have nonetheless. Good sentimental value. That's the word I was looking for. Next question. Hi Ryan, how's your girlfriend? Uh, is she coming to France soon? Hopefully, yes, and she's fine, thank you. Everything is just hunky-dory uh, in my personal life, I must say. Very good, I can't complain. Uh, and I do hope she's gonna come to France soon. Time will tell. Nothing is set in stone just yet, but yeah, you'll see. Another question, Ryan. What is the actual name of the convent? I don't actually know. And when was it founded? I uh, don't know, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to ask Billy. We just call it the convent, but there is a plaque outside the convent that anyone can, can go and look at and find out. So actually maybe I'll go and have a look at that when I'm back and uh, then you'll know. Where are you and Billy originally from? Well, Billy is originally from Kent, and I'm originally from Essex. I'm born in Essex, but my family's from London, East London. Uh, I come to France when I was five years old, um, so I consider myself a little mix of French and English, but I am English. But I would like to be French. I'd like to get a French passport due to the old Brexit, you know? Haven't got that freedom of movement anymore. No, 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 no. Ryan, are you, Billy Gwen and the boys now staying in the guest house full time or are you temporarily there instead of a chateau room? Um, yes, okay, so we are currently in the guest house and I'm lucky enough to be living there as well at the moment. Uh, the plan is uh, not to live there forever. I'm talking about Billy, Gwen and the boys. They're not gonna live in the guest house forever. They'll eventually move back into the chateau uh, in due time. However, the guest house is just so practical and uh, very nice indeed inside and smaller. So, you know, the bills are gonna be a little bit less as well. That is, I imagine why they chose to live in the guest house for the time being. Do the people who buy a chateau in France get structural reports before purchase? Yes, I do believe so. Uh, for, when you purchase a property in France, the seller will have to have a report done. And in this report, there's gonna be a variety of uh, things that are uh, looked at, such as the presence of lead paint, asbestos, the septic tank, which is, you know, when you have a little poo-poo down the toilet, where does it go? Usually goes into a tank. And uh, they recently changed a few years ago, probably about 10 or 15 years ago now, the, um, the norm, what's the norm, what's acceptable as a septic tank. But uh, a lot of properties in France have these septic tanks that are not up to the French regulatory standards. But I mean, does it matter? Yes, it, it does matter, I guess. Actually, when you buy a property in France, there's a very low chance of you getting kind of scammed because the whole process, you go through a notaire, 
which is kind of like the equivalent of a solicitor, very official. It takes months and months and months to do. Uh, I think the quickest it can be is like a couple of months, which is still a very long time. Don't worry about buying a property in France. Just make sure you read the deeds. Sometimes there, there might be like a rite of passage for certain people or something like that. So you want to be careful uh, when you buy a property in France. Make sure you understand what you're buying exactly and if someone has a right to walk through your land because I have seen that in the past. There you go. Another question, what does Billy and yourself eat for each meal of the day? Well, usually we'll wake up, we'll have a coffee that'll perk us up until lunchtime and then we love to go to a local bakery um, and get a nice French sandwich, which is in a baguette, usually chicken and mayonnaise. It's absolutely delicious. And a dessert as well. I do like lemon tart or meringue uh, or a nice chocolate eclair. Eclair au chocolat, as they say in France. Very nice indeed. Next question. Oh, and Billy has the same. Next question. How is Billy going to heat the convent this winter? He had removed all the old heating system piping from the convent. Well, he hasn't removed all of it. He's just removed, removed it in part of the convent. And a lot of the convent still does have its old system because it is just so big. Uh, as for how he is going to heat it, I think the part that's being worked on, uh, we're just going to have to heat it with electric heaters or plug-in heaters. I mean, this is me talking, so this isn't Billy. Maybe he's got some master plan. Who knows? A heating system to install. Whatever type of heating system is going to be expensive. Oh, yes. <laughs> but that's why he removed the old one because it's not efficient anymore you know oil heating it's essentially diesel and the price of diesel has skyrocketed so it is not cheap to heat your place using diesel or fuel as they call it in france oh good question here well this is a long question it's going to take some time to answer Sometime will you discuss taxes in France? What is the property tax rate? Is there a sales tax or income tax? Is there a tax on cars? Right, let's break that down. What is the property tax rate? There is a property tax in France called taxe foncière and there's no set rate, I don't think. It's based on what the size of the building, how much land you have. So if you have a small house with a small garden, it's going to be or an apartment, it's going to be very cheap. But if you have a great big manor house or chateau and you have acres and acres of land, it can be over 10 grand um, in property tax. And that's annually. So you pay that every year. So the more you have, the more you get taxed. It's just the way it is. Uh, is there a sales tax? Yes, there's a sales tax in France. And I believe it's the same for most countries in Europe. And that is called VAT or DVA in French. And it stands for tax sur la valeur ajoutée or value added tax in English. And uh, it's 20% for most things. So what you'll find if you're coming from America, um, most things are going to be more expensive here, like electronics, clothes, uh, even cars have um, VAT, I think. Yes, there's also income tax. It's called impôt sur le revenu. And there's also social charges, which they, they call cotisation sociale or charge sociale. So they don't call it a tax, but it is a tax. And that is, uh, that's the big one. That's like 25% for services if you're self-employed. From the first euro you make, they will take 25% for this. And that covers all of the, uh, everything to do with healthcare, retirement, unemployment too. That is the uh, cotisation sociale, I believe. And then once impôt sur le revenu comes into play, income tax comes into play, then you could end up paying like 40, 45, even, yeah, about 40, 45% for, for an average salary, I think, if you're self-employed. That's how much you'd be paying if you have a company. So yeah, tax in France is pretty brutal, but you do get healthcare included which is good so when you go to the hospital you get hurt or you get something really bad really bad you're in intensive care oh no the hospital bill is really expensive well you don't even see the hospital bill because it's all paid for by the government because you pay your taxes 
So that's good. Uh, last one, is there a tax on cars? Well, in the UK, for example, you have road tax, which you pay every year. But in France, you don't. You actually pay to get the, the log book, like the deed to the car. And that's based on how big the engine is. I think, for example, my car was almost 300 euros. Um, and you pay that once, and that's it. You don't have to pay that again, uh, which is very good. So it works out a lot cheaper if you have a car for many years. But if you change every year, you obviously keep have to buy a new um, deed to the car, which is called a grey card in French. Carte grise. Next question. How old were you and Billy when you started antiquing? I was about 18 or 19 before I even met Billy. And Billy must have been in his early 20s. Yeah, we've always enjoyed it. Um, because we like going to Vide Grenier as well which are like yard sales or boot sales where everyone's selling their stuff in, in the village on the same day. Antique shops are very frequent and common in France. It's almost a part of French culture. Oh, question in French. Est-ce qu'on trouve autant de choses dans les magasins d'antiquité au Royaume-Uni et à quel prix? I'll translate that for you. Um, do we find as many things in uh, the antique shops in the UK and at what prices? To be honest, I have no idea, but I can't imagine you would find as many antiques in the UK just because it's a smaller country and the culture's a bit different. And I can imagine the prices being a little bit higher in the UK. And if we're talking French stuff, obviously the prices are gonna be the cheapest in France. But be wary of going antique shopping in Paris because uh, there might be quite the markup on uh, antiques in Paris. Further from Paris you go, you know, you go to the countryside, you get some better deals. Are you really where you want to be? Life goes by quickly. Life does indeed go by quickly, and yes, I am definitely where I want to be. I couldn't imagine myself living in any other country permanently. France is the place for me. Overall, uh, I've lived here many years, virtually all my life and I love it. Couldn't be happier. Another question. Hey Ryan, are you about to buy a property? Well, to do with the bank, the whole bank situation, that's why I was going to the bank, that's why I went to a few meetings, trying to, you know, take the next step in life. But unfortunately, uh, obviously, it's proving quite difficult just to meet with someone who works in a bank. So uh, yes, I'd like to buy a property fairly soon, but um, that's proving to be a slow process, unfortunately. What are the French authorities like? Question mark. Gendarmerie. So gendarmerie is uh, the police in France. And uh, I'd say they're pretty much fantastic. I've never really dealt with them much. But uh, I've been stopped by the gendarmerie once whilst driving. Super friendly, super nice. I've never really heard many bad stories about the police here in France. You don't have to worry about them, like, treating you differently if you're a foreigner or if you can't speak French. They are extremely professional in most cases, uh, and they are here to protect and serve the public. And I think they do a very good job. I respect the gendarmerie. Next question. What have you done with Billy? His dailies have collapsed. Now, it's entirely Billy's choice. Uh, to stop doing daily videos. Uh, I think he wants to focus obviously on work uh, in the convent and also maybe spend a bit more time with family too because daily videos can be quite laborious and uh, also when he makes a weekly video the, uh, the quality is going to be a bit better as well even though his dailies were amazing. What is your favorite pastime? Love this road trip so far. Favorite pastime? I enjoy making videos, to be honest. That's what I enjoy doing. I really do. Uh, how is Michael? He's fine. He's doing really good. He's just um, focusing on his, uh, his, his cottage and his artwork. And he's filming too. He is filming. I'm going to end the video now. I hope this has been informative and somewhat fun for you. This little Q&A. It's been uh, a last minute thing. So... Hope it comes out well, but 
you know, not every video can be a good one, so I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. But anyway, I'm gonna go now because it's crikey. It's almost 8 p.m. and I need to get this video uploaded and to your screen. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna love you and leave you now and I'll see you in the next video, which happens to be tomorrow. A lot of mosquitoes around here. Bye-bye now. Cause it